Well, hi everyone. Happy Sunday to you all. I can't even tell if it's all that happy. I think it's, um, it is what it is at the, at the moment. I have no idea how many days we've been in this whole pandemic shelter in place thing. Uh, didn't you just love uh, Willie's uh, testify and how amazing it was that the Lord speaks like that to people and just shares his, uh, his love to, to us. You know, if you want to uh, be in a, a, a place where that can happen for you, uh, we're doing communion at Baldwin Park at 2 o'clock. And if you're listening to this on the Sunday morning feed, then just show up at Baldwin Park today at 2 p.m. And we're going to have a communion time where the, you'll have a moment where the Lord is going to be able to uh, speak to you. You know, through all of our life, God is doing something. He's involved in our life, and He is a good God, so He is doing good things. I want you to think of one thing about your relationship with God that you really love Him for. Like, like for me, I love His presence. I love that when I go for a walk, He invariably lets me know that He's walking with me. I love that. could be uh, His faithfulness to you, or that he just is so merciful and, and we do all these things wrong and, and he still pursues us and forgives us by his work on the cross. It could be just the realization of, a, of the cross. So um, think of a, a word or a phrase and put it in the comment section of, of your device and, and send it on. And while you're there, share this feed with people so that uh, others can participate with you in, uh, in our service, in our time together. So uh, that would be great for you to do. And I want to talk to you today about something that has surprised, <laughs> surprised me. You know, I have passionately followed Christ for well over 40 years now. And uh, I wasn't I wasn't a Christian until um, my mid-twenties, and, and when I found him, I just passionately fell in love with him because of his love for me. And back in those days, uh, it was kind of in the middle of what they called the, um, the Jesus movement, or Jesus people, and there, it was kind of a reformation of music and there were you know kind of rock and roll guys that were getting saved and uh, the guy named Keith Green was just passionately in love with Jesus and um, you know he had long hair and um, and a guy named Larry Norman and they wrote songs about the second return about Jesus coming back the return of Christ and Larry Norman wrote this really famous song that actually everyone we used to sing it all the time, and it was, it was I'm, I'm not going to sing it for you, but the words were, I wish they all would be ready when Jesus comes back, that we all have to be ready because it's that, that moment. And we've been in this, this time that we started with uh, uh, in that moment and now in this moment, in that day, I guess, and now in this moment, and it kind of started with the, with the pandemic, uh, the virus going around, and it was world, just earth-shaking worldwide. And then the racial tension that's come up and the, the uh, us versus them thing that Pastor Audrey taught on the last couple of weeks, just it's been unbelievably different than, than all of the, the time. And it's reminded me of the, the return of Christ. And so I wanted to read in, in a kind of a foundational way to what I want to talk to you about. This is out of Matthew 24. Um, and just listen to these, these words, and I hope it, it affects you the way it has affected me. Um, so this is beginning in verse 5. We're going to end in verse 14. There's more to it uh, that we'll be getting into later, but... Uh, Jesus answered, at that time, deception will run rampant. So part of, part of the thought process I want us in is, what is the time that he's speaking of? Because 
this is the first time in years that I've thought, hmm, I wonder if this is the beginning of that time. You will hear of wars nearby and revolutions on every side, with more rumors of war to come. Don't panic or give in to your fears, for the breaking apart of the world systems is destined to happen. Now, I hope you're getting what I get out of that. The, the world systems, I mean, there's a lot of chaos running around right now. So it's like, wow, this, this, maybe this is the time that it was talking about. But it won't yet be the end. There, it will still but be unfolding. Listen to this. Nations will go to war against each other and kingdoms, people groups, kingdoms against kingdoms. And there will be terrible earthquakes, seismic events of epic portions. And you know, there's no one that can't say that what's been going on the last four or five months isn't uh, of epic proportions, right? And famines in place after place. This is how the first contractions and birth pains of the age will begin. So, you know, I have no idea how long it's going to take. I, I've just never experienced anything at like this moment. So uh, I'm saying this is the beginning of something. And now, this is serious. Um, and I want to say this as serious as I can to my, myself and to all of us. You can expect to be persecuted, even killed. For you will be hated by all the nations because of your love for me, Jesus speaking. Let that sink in, because I, you know, I'm not a big persecution buff. I, I'm, it isn't, uh, I haven't been looking for the pers persecution, but it, this is out of scripture, right out of Matthew 24. Uh, it's in Revelation as well, by the way. Then many will stop following me and fall away. So who is that? Many. That's going to fall away. And they will betray one another and hate one another. And many lying prophets will arise, deceiving the multitudes and leading them away from the path of truth. Now grab on to this, this line, because this is what grabbed me uh, in this moment. There will be such an increase of sin and lawlessness that those whose hearts once burned with passion for God. And I started this by saying that's what happened to me. My heart burns with passion for God. That those whose hearts once bur burned with passion for God and others will grow cold but our hope but keep your hope to the end and you will experience life and deliverance beginning next week we're going to start a series out of the uh, the letters to the churches in in revelation you're not going to want to miss this because it will help clarify more and more some of the things we're talking about uh, that come out of matthew 24 so I was just struck by, really, is that possibly talking about me? Is it possibly talking about you? Uh, I mean, how many of you would say, to, like I do, I have passion for God? Uh, you know, if you do, in the comment section, write passion for God, or that's me, or something, uh, or raise your hand, or just identify so that so you know that you're, what we're going to talk about is us, those that have a passion for God. Now, in Luke 10, which is uh, part of the teaching series, the, the entire chapter goes, has a very interesting rhythm to it. it. It starts out with Jesus sending out the 72 disciples and anoints them, and, and they have this rip-roaring time of healing people, delivering people, uh, just an amazing time, come back so excited, and then it moves to a little smaller setting of um, how to care for your neighbor, the, you know, 
care for your neighbor. Who's your neighbor? Care for, care for them. And then goes to an even smaller and more intimate setting in a story about um, uh, Mary and Martha. And it's a very famous story. So let me read it to you uh, because it gives a, a, some clarity about passion uh, and how you keep your passion and what gets in the way of your passion. So this is um, out of Luke, uh, beginning in, in verse, um, chapter 10, verse 38. As Jesus and his disciples were on their way, he came to a village where a woman named Martha opened her home to him. So that for, gives you first indication. This is Martha who knows and cares about Jesus. This isn't you know, a Pharisee or someone, someone else. That she had a heart for, for Jesus. How many have a heart for Jesus? I have a heart for Jesus, like, like Martha. She had a sister called Mary who sat at the Lord's feet listening to what he said. But Martha, a lover of Christ, a lover of the one that was right there, uh, was distracted by all the preparations that had to be made. So think about this for just a, just a second. Because oftentimes we put Martha in kind of a wrong category, like, like what's wrong with Martha? But uh, I think in a lot of ways, I'm kind of like that. Um, and I think in a lot of ways, maybe you are too. Matter of fact, I'm gonna take the maybe out of it. You're like that too. And it, it isn't that I, that I don't love Jesus, it's that I, I'm doing a lot of really good things. I, I, and important things, distracting things, and even though my, I have great love for him, I'm not paying attention to him in the midst of that great love, and that's what was happening to Martha. She was doing important things, because there, uh, at that point there were lots of ritualistic religious things that needed to be done in preparation for people to eat and to stay and, and all of that in their, in their culture. So she came and asked the Lord, don't you care that my sister has left me to do the work by myself? Tell her to help me. And Jesus says to her with so much love, you are worried and upset about many things, but few things are needed, and indeed only one. Catch, catch that, because that's such an important thing. Only one thing is needed, and he's going to tell us right now what that one thing is. Mary has chosen what is better, and it will not be taken from me. It's to sit at the feet of Jesus, to be intimate with him, is the, is the one thing. So the interesting thing about this story is if you, if you go to John chapter 11, you will see an, a new part of, of Martha that connects with this story. Um, Lazarus, who is Mary and Martha's uh, brother, dies. And they had wanted Jesus to come because they knew he was a healer and could make things uh, different for him. So Lazarus dies and Martha hears that Jesus is coming and runs out to him and complains to him. Like, where were you? Like, and, you know, completely misinterpreted the heart of Jesus. And you know what Mary was? She was at home just knowing that Jesus was coming and that Jesus would figure it out. And th there's such a difference in those two realities. And I kind of wondered what that was. Now for Martha, you know, at the, at the end times, you know, her passion probably didn't run cold and she probably still, she's probably in heaven now waiting for us. But I wondered about what, what was that? Because she reacted poorly to Jesus, even though she had a relationship with him. As I was preparing this, my daily reading was running through Second Kings in the Old Testament. And I started to read this, this thing through chapter 12 through 15, and it goes on. And there, it, it mentions four different kings, uh, Josiah in chapter 12, Amaziah in 14, uh, Azariah in 15, and Jotham in f chapter 15. And the, as they each become kings, it says the same exact phrase, and it's word for word. It says, the king, 
as they were made king and walked their life, did what was right in the eyes of the Lord. Had a relationship with, with God. Did what was right. Did the Martha kinds of things, preparing things and doing things. Did what was right in the eyes of the Lord. But then there's another sentence in every one of these. It's not every single king, but in, in these four it says, however... They did what was right in the eyes of the Lord. However, the high places were not not removed. And I've read that over and over and over uh, in my yearly Bible reading for years and years and years, and I've never made note of, well, what's the high place? Well, the high place back then was for worship of other gods. And uh, when a king did what was right in the eyes of the Lord, he he cleaned out all of the Baal worship, all of the other um, idols and all of that, cleaned them out, quit doing it, and started following God. But these four didn't remove the places where that worship happened. It was still still there. Um, and that was called the high places. Um, and as I was reading that and thinking about Martha, I, re- I realized this about Martha, about me, and maybe about you. Before I met the Lord, my life was really all about self. That was it. Um, you know, I built everything in my life around self. And I had a lot of things that happened. Um, for me, I, I was really addicted to alcohol. Um, Not drugs so much, but alcohol. But that was part of my self-driven life. Um, Money was important to me at that that time. Uh, And and things, you know, if you can think of your life either before you met Jesus, you know, what was important to you? Because those are the high places of your life. They were the high places of Martha's life. Um, she, Martha was a, an approval addict. She wanted people to approve. She wanted her house clean and the, uh, the dinner right and everything was, was uh, important for her. She was a religious person and wanted everything cleaned up and be, you know, done in the right order, even though God himself was sitting, <laughs> sitting there. She, rather than look at God, she wanted to make sure everything was done done properly. For me, you know, all of that stuff was in my life, and then I met Jesus. And I set everything else aside, and I grabbed onto him, because he was everything to me. And, and I, uh, I quit doing alcohol. The, the last drink I had was the day before I met Jesus in my, in my life. And he reordered my life, and, and I just started leaning on to him in my life. And I found out that as my life went on, other things started coming back. Um, I, let me get this back this way. I saw that self had a, <laughs> had a hold on, on me, that I inherently was still kind of selfish. And, and when I quit hanging on to Jesus solely, self would come back. I'd still be hanging on to Jesus, but, uh, but self was part of my, my life. So was a need for approval. Uh, and I started stacking things back on. You know, like I said, I read th- scripture through uh, every every year, and that can become a religious activity. Um, still hanging on to Jesus, but um, but those were high places in my in my life. Uh, for for you, and I'd like you to identify what are the your high places. And for many, uh, social media is a is a high place. It is a god that you could be delivered from it video games uh, wherever the the idea is wherever you are 
the place that God brought you out of, or whatever you run to in order to have comfort, confidence, or courage is a high place if it isn't Jesus. Um, and I, I want you to identify what they, they might be because it, it's going to be important uh, for many, this, uh, maybe men, but for women, you know, how they look is really important. Um, for many, entertainment, you know, sports, that kind of, kind of thing is important. So you still have Jesus, but if you haven't removed the high places, when you're under pressure, when you feel a lack of courage or a lack of confidence, confidence or a lack of comfort, you're going to lean back to your high place in, in life. And that's what Martha did. And that's why she missed the heart of God, because she was hanging on to him, but hanging on to approval and the other, other things. So, so that, that's just an, a natural understanding of things. But this moment is different than any other moment. And I want to talk to you about this moment and, and the severity of what I'm saying. And I'm saying it for, for me as strongly as I'm saying it for anybody else. I want to read a scripture out of Haggai chapter 2. For I am with you, declares the Lord. This is what I coveted to you when you came out of Egypt. So he is with us when he brought us out of slavery, when he brought us out of our high places. He is with us. And my spirit remains with you. His spirit is still here. It's on, in us and on us, and we have it. It's with Martha. Uh, it's, he's with me. Remains with you, so don't fear. This is what the Lord Almighty says. In a little while, I will once more shake the heavens and the earth and the sea, and the dry land. I will shake all the nations. This is what's so important in, at this moment because we have been shaken. You know, I've heard so many people say when shelter in place started, wow, this is great. I'm going to be able to spend more time with the Lord. I'm going to be reading more scripture. I'm going to uh, join a small group. I'm going to participate more. And the question is, has that been true for you? Because it, at, at first it wasn't true for me. I watched more TV. I leaned back and my high places kind of rose up in my life in some, in some ways. And here's what happens then with that is as shaking happens, things start falling. And when something falls that's important to you, you will grab onto it. And as you grab onto it, it's possible that Jesus, your love of Jesus, falls away. And it's so important that, that everything about you resides with both hands on Jesus. You, the other things, you can play a video game because it's fun. But if you need a video game to escape, you need to realize you got to hang on to Jesus. You got to sit at his feet more. Let me read, uh, give you a couple of scriptures behind this. I'm going to set all of this down and only hold him. Do you realize that God says he is the God of all your comfort? In 2 Corinthians 1 3, 3, he says, Praise be to God the Father the Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of compassion and the God of all comfort. If, if you are needing comfort, um, I often go to potato chips, and I should go to him, because potato chips aren't the God of all comfort. It's a high place that I need to realize my comfort comes from him. The sense of when you lose confidence and if you feel like, oh, I just don't feel like I can make it in this world. 
you're, that's a lack of confidence. You can't hide. You know, you can't hide in books. You can't hide in TV. You can't hide in things. You have to find Jesus. In 2 Corinthians 3, 4, and 5, it says, Such confidence we have through Christ before God. Not that we're competent in ourselves or anything for ourselves, but our competence, confidence comes from Christ. You can't get it from your high place. And if you haven't removed the high place, it will seep back in and you'll try to gain confidence when you are fearful. Ezra 7, 8 says, because the hand of my God was on me, I took courage. Those are the three things that are so important to us in the shaking. Comfort. You've got to find comfort in Jesus. Your confidence has to be found in, in Jesus. Courage has to be found in Jesus. And only him. It's so critical at this moment. And I think it is how, we, how that scripture that says when Jesus comes back, some that were passionate are going to be against him. I think there's a, a realm and that we have to realize. We have to do things to, say, to, to not hold on to the things that aren't important. You can participate in them, but don't hang on to them. And if you find yourself hanging on to them because you're feeling like lack of confidence or uncomfortable, um, then hang on to Jesus. At Sanctuary, there's four important steps that we all have to participate in. No one's exempt. It's how you hang on to God. The first is you got to know God and you got to keep knowing Him better. Um, and you do that by saying, I don't know you as well as I should and I want to. I choose today to lean in to the work that you've already done, to clear the way, that all of the high places in my life that I've looked for comfort, um, confidence, or courage, I, I just leave those behind because you are the better way. You are the better way. You also have to find freedom because knowing God isn't enough. Finding his freedom is so important. Um, we do that by small groups. You can join a small group this week. I would encourage you to find a small group. You can go online on our website, www.sanctuaryconquered.org. Get to the small group section and pick one and join. They're all on, on Zoom right now, so you, you don't even have to leave your house, but by connecting with people, because we're better together, you'll be able to hang on to Jesus because what has held you won't draw you back to your high, high place. Thirdly, you gotta f know your purpose. As you get, hang on to God, he will show you that you have a purpose that he's predestined you for. It's how you were built. We want you to find your purpose and we can help you do that by growth track. This is a great Sunday because it's the first Sunday of the month. You can start growth track today. It's less than an hour uh, at 12 o'clock on Sunday. We do it each, each week, growth track one through four, but it'll keep you from returning to your high places that you worship self. And fourthly, you gotta find a way to serve. And we wanna help you find that way to serve. You get through growth track, we will help you find a way to care about other people. Because that's all folded into everybody's destiny. So I want you to take a moment, close your eyes. Consider this moment. Maybe you have high places that aren't really removed. They weren't as dominant when you met the Lord, and there's been times when you, you, know, you have an emotional experience and 
you kind of clean it up, but um, if, if you know that you're dealing with high places that are getting in the way, we want to pray for you. If that's you, I want you to close your eyes. I'm going to ask Jesus. You see many of us, and, and I can include myself. In this past week, you've shown me how I've got my comfort in other places rather than, than you. And I don't want that, and I'm sorry. I, I repent of it. Just If this is you, just whisper your repentance. I repent of it. And I lean into the work you've done at the cross already, to, so I know you've forgiven me. And I want a new start. And Lord, I ask you to have each one that is praying this prayer. If, if someone doesn't know you, then let them start today. In repenting for all the... They just don't want their life to be the way it's been. They want it to be how you developed it. I just ask you to come into their life, forgive them, turn them around, and get them connected with us. There's a day coming where the scripture says, for those that have been passionate for God, if you don't hold on to Him and get rid of the high places, your passion may grow cold. Don't let it be you. I'm serious about this. You have to do something. He's done the heavy lifting. Jesus has done the heavy lifting. All He's asking you to do is get connected. To to join Growth Track, to get in a small group, to find how to, how to serve. Just reach out. Get connected so that we can journey together. And, and when persecution comes, we have each other and Jesus. It's way better than potato chips, I can tell you that. We're going to be here, and uh, the prayer line is going to be opened uh, to you. Just um, they'll give you instructions in just a moment on how to do that. If you've responded to this message, just in the comment section, write "It's me" or "Me" or "I'm in" or something that let us know, and let us walk this way together. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May the Lord be gracious to you. And may you find peace. Let him be your comfort. Let him be your confidence. And let him be your courage. He is Jesus. And we will remain desperately in love with him. God bless you. Thank you, Pastor Jim, for that beautiful message. I know that you received that from sitting with him and listening to him, and it's blessed all of us today. I just want to encourage you um, as a sanctuary, as, as you hear this message, I just want to encourage you to take in every rich piece of it, but don't just listen to it. Find in your heart what it is that Jesus is asking you to do with it. He always calls us to do um, something about what we hear when we're listening into him. So um, ask the Holy Spirit in this moment, not just in this moment, but all day today, what is it that you want me to do about the message that I heard today? Because it's when we step into action and literally live out the things that we've heard in scripture or through um, the preaching of the word that our transformation is activated and our faith grows. So I want to ask you, what is it that you're going to do different this week? There's something that God is asking you to do a little bit different this week, that when you step in faith and do those things, you will experience the transformation that Jesus has for you that's going to bring greater life, greater joy, 
and the the intimacy that he has with you through relationship with him so um i also wanted to to just invite you if you have heard that message today and you really don't have a deep relationship with jesus and you'd like to step into that relationship with him i want to invite you to pray with me right now and give your heart to him open the door really all it is is that you are acknowledging that he is the lord and savior of your life that you cannot do this life perfectly and you have not done it perfectly in the past and you need a savior and jesus is that savior for you if you'd like to pray that prayer with me all you have to do is acknowledge that you need him believe that he's the one and just confess that you are giving your heart to him so let's pray together i'm going to lead you through that prayer jesus we just thank you so much for the message that you gave to us today I thank you that you're a living God and that you are the King of all kings and you are the Lord and Savior of our lives. There is no way into eternal life except through you. And so we just ask that you'd wash away our sins, that you'd forgive us for our past, and that you would set us on course for the future that you always had in store and planned for us to live out. We ask right now that you would come into our hearts, that you would come into our lives, that you would be the king of our hearts and the Lord of our lives. We give you our future, we give you our past, and we say today is the day that we choose to follow you. In your name we pray, amen. So if you prayed that prayer today and you made a decision, maybe you're renewing your faith or maybe you're, you're stepping into faith for the first time, I wanna ask you to please let us know. You can text us, t- t- text TS, amen to 94000 and it just will alert our team that you made that decision today. It's really important that you share it with someone because uh, when we make decisions of that magnitude, we know that we're going to need help to walk these things out. So just go ahead and text us. We're we're not going to harass you about it, but we will connect with you and just start giving you um, your next steps and ways to, to walk with Jesus, but also how to connect to this church to find your community here. So TS, amen, to 94000. And I also wanted to invite our church uh, to give. I'm just so thankful for the generosity of Sanctuary that even in this tough season of COVID-19, where we're all experiencing trial, um, God has been so generous to keep us moving forward and giving us the ability to be generous to others and support others who need relief in this time. And if you'd like to give into Sanctuary, I would love it. And I want to pray for that offering right now for your tithes and offering that are coming in. There's three ways that you can give to Sanctuary. You can give um, just right on our website at sanctuaryconquer.org. Just go to our homepage. You'll see a little button that says give. That's probably the easiest way. But another really easy way is that you can text your gift in. So you can text it right to us or you can mail a check. If you would rather just mail a check the old school way, uh, we are still receiving mail at our office. So go ahead and do it that way as well. All right, so let me pray for that. God, I just thank you for the, the way that you are providing for our church. I thank you for the way you are moving upon hearts to be generous into the body of Christ, that the body of Christ could continue to be generous and um, support those who are in need and to continue to forward the message of hope that you have um, through Sanctuary. I ask that you'd bless this offering right now and um, give us wisdom to know how to use these finances for your glory. In your name we pray, amen. Okay, lastly, I wanna invite you to meet us at the park today. It's Communion Sunday. We're gonna do communion at Baldwin Park at 2 p.m. We'd love for you to be there. I know um, it's a little scary to get out and about, but bring your mask. We're gonna social distance, but we will have communion together, which is so important, and it will be a blessed time. I know that getting together, fellowshipping, loving on one another is part of what's gonna keep us going and keep us infused with with the life and the hope and the truth of Jesus in this in this season. Okay, so we will see you at Baldwin Park at 2 p.m. for communion today. Thank you so much for being with us online today. We love you and have a blessed week.